then of course the question becomes, what happens when A does not equal one? So we have trinomials of the form AX squared plus BX plus C, not necessarily X, X doesn't have to be the variable, but we have to write something down. So we have, we have trinomials of the form, say AX squared plus BX plus C, where A doesn't equal one. Then that very systematic method isn't as systematic as it used to be. Now there is something called the AC method, which is kind of like the previous method that I showed you. It's, it is systematic, but it's a big pain in the butt. So I don't teach it. And some people learned it that way. If you want to use that method, that's fine. But I'm not going to teach the AC method. I'm going to teach trial and error on this, okay? Because with, for all practical purposes, trial and error works better than the AC method. It just takes a little bit of practice. So what do I mean by trial and error? Well, we're still going to reverse FOIL. We're still going to write down two parentheses. So let's do that. Um, I, in part A, uh, the directions say factor 3x squared minus x minus 4. So I'm going to write down two parentheses. And I'm going to think FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. OK, the first multipliers have to be, oh, you have to multiply them out and get 3x squared. Does everybody see that? So whatever number you put here, Whatever number and, you know, also the variable you put here, you multiply those for the first multiplication. You, you, you have to get 3x squared. So because 3 is a prime number, there's not a whole lot of options. What do they have to be, the first multipliers? 3x and x doesn't matter if I write 3x and x or x and 3x. doesn't matter. I usually put that bigger number out front, but it doesn't matter. 3x and x. And then here's where the trial and error part comes in. We need two numbers whose product is uh, a, a minus four, right? So the last, from the FOIL method, the last multipliers go here and here, right? We need those last multipliers to, to multiply out to be negative four. That's not trial and error. That, we know that's true. But there's options, right? I mean, what could happen here? You, you could get, what are two numbers that multiply to be Forget about the negative. That multiply to be uh, 4. You, you could have 4 and 1, right? Or 1 and 4. It makes a difference, the order in which you put them in now, when, when A does not equal 1. Uh, what, are, what, are other, what are two other uh, factors you could get that multiply out to be f just 4 for now? Forget about the negative for now. Uh, one, uh, 2 and 2. And, okay, you flip them around, you get 2 and 2, right? Let's take, okay, trial and error. Let's take two and two and see if it works. So let's go, uh, now by the way, one of, the, one of them has to be minus, right? Because the minus on the end. So let's take, uh, let's, here's how I do it. I set it up and I have an eraser handy. If you're using a pen, you're a little too optimistic, okay? Get a pencil with an eraser. Um, and then, um, I set up the two parentheses, I try two and two, and I don't feel like thinking about it, so I know one of them has to be minus, I'm just gonna make that minus, oh, uh, it has to be three x and x, and then I'm gonna pick two and two, and I'm gonna make that one minus, and that one plus, because I don't wanna think about it, I just wanna multiply it back out and see if it works, because I'm tired, right? Um, so that's the, we're gonna try it, and then we're gonna error, that's the, we're gonna have both in this, in this part. So three x minus two, okay, let's just multiply it out. By design, you don't have to do the whole FOIL method. By design, you know that the first terms, when you multiply them out, it's going to be 3x squared, right? So do you have to check that? No, you, you got that by design. You know the last terms are going to multiply out to be minus 4 from the FOIL method, the L from the FOIL method. Do, do you have to check that? No. What's the only multiplying that you need to check? The outer and the inner get you this middle term when you add them together, right? So in the trial and error method, if you come up with trial factors, you only have to check the outer and inner multiplications and make sure you get, in this case, a minus x when you multiply them together. So let's check that. Do we get, do we get what we want? Okay, when we multiply out the outers, what do we get? 6x, we multiply out the inner. Are those going to combine together to make a minus uh, 1x? 
Now, is it going to matter if I reverse the negative? Because, you know, I could have, I could have written it this way. I could have written it as 3x plus 2 times x minus 2. That'll get me the right first and last terms when I uh, multiply them out. But it's not going to matter, right? I mean, when you add this guy plus this guy, you get a positive 4x. Uh, now, if you do it, you'd get a minus 6x here and a plus 2x here. If you add this guy plus this guy, you'd get a minus 4x. It's wrong either way, isn't it? Okay. So um, what you can do is just keep a list of all your trials. So this would be trial 1. This would be trial two. Both of them are wrong, right? They don't, they're not a correct factorization of the given polynomial. They don't multiply back out to be the given polynomial, so you know they're wrong. So what about these two trial factors, two and two, disregarding the negative? They don't work, so what do you want to try? They're four and one and one and four, with one of them negative, right? So um, let's, let's do another trial. So got to be 3x and x, right, for the first multipliers. And then, um, all right, uh, do you want to try 4 and 1 or 1 and 4? Let's just to error one more time, let's do 1 and 4. It won't necessarily take you four tries. But let's do one and four just to show you another part of the trial and error, the error part of the trial and error. Okay, what do you want, which one do you want to make minus? You know, one of them has to be a negative. The one, all right. So now, multiply back out to check. This is a trial factorization. To check it, multiply out the outer and inner terms to see if you get the correct middle term when you add them together. So you multiply out the 3x and the 4. What do you get? 12x. Now, right away, I see that's, that's too big because I'm, I'm shooting for a negative x in the middle, right? So in reality, I wouldn't even try this factorization. With a little bit of practice, you know it's not going to work. But at first, you try it because you're not sure. And then you get a minus x here. What happens when you add a minus x plus a 12x? Do you get anywhere near a negative 1x? No. What happens if you reverse the negative? So, oh, by the way, I was thinking of that as being plus. What happens if you reverse the negative around? Is that going to help? That just makes it the opposite. Instead of 11x, you get negative 11x if you reverse the negative. So that's not the correct order, is it? What, what else do you want to try? Yeah, 3x. Set up your parentheses with the 3x and x as your first multipliers. And then I'm going 4 and 1. And then don't even put in the signs yet. Check the outer and inner multiplications, just absolute value-wise. Check them. What do you get when you multiply out the outer? 3x. What do you get when you multiply out the inner? And then, okay, you know one of them has to be a minus, right? So think to yourself, okay, I've got absolute value-wise. I've got 4x and 3x for outer and inner multiplications. Can I make the difference between them 1x or negative 1x? I can. To make a negative 1x, which one has to be minus? That guy, right? So that translates to having a minus there and a plus there. Do you buy that? And that's the right factorization. So just to clean up our work a little bit, you get as a final answer 3x minus 4 as a quantity times the quantity uh, x plus 1. Now, it took me four tries to get the right answer there. In reality, with a little bit of practice, it takes you one or two tries on a problem like this. Okay, um, but I wanted to show you kind of the worst case scenario. So I just kept a list of all my trial factors. Uh, this one didn't work. This one didn't work. Um, this one, uh, no bueno. This one, yep, it worked. Okay, so just be organized about it. If you wanted to, you could make a little table. I didn't do that in this case because I prefer just listing them. But if you wanted to, you could... Um, you could have made a table, like a T-chart table. And then you could say on the left side, this is your trial factorization.
On the right side, um, how about uh, the middle term? Which is what you get when you add the outer and inner multi uh, multiplications together, right? So like, just to give you one example on this first one, you could have written down your trial factorization. And then the, the middle term is actually 6x minus 2x, which is 4x. And then you would just say no or put an x, maybe not an x there to exit out, but maybe just a no. Because you don't want to go back, read it later, and think you're writing down an x when you meant to say, nope, that doesn't work, strike, tr strike one, right? Okay, and then you could do the, you could, you could list out the other ones. Like you could list out, um, maybe you wouldn't bother trying this one because it's just going to reverse the sign. When you reverse the negative, it's just going to reverse the sign on the, on the 4x. Um, so um, you would just write down maybe this one, 3x minus 1 times x plus 4. And very quickly, when you, when you multiply out the outer term and the inner term, you get 12x minus x. And you might not even add those together. You might say no right away because you know 11x is not anywhere near negative 1x. And you could keep a list that way. I really don't care which way you do it. Just be organized. That's the key. So, don't, so you don't end up trying the same factorization twice, right?